welcome to Match Day Live. Was anybody else welling up watching those highlights again? Love them, we'll never get old for watching those. And we are on the verge of a new season. Of course, today is the Community Shield, and it's just the second Community Shield game between City and Liverpool, with City winning on penalties back in 2019, following a one-all draw in the other. Now, this is the first time in the Community Shield that it has been held outside of Wembley since 2012, with City beating Chelsea 3-2 at Villa Park on that day. Now, I am joined in the studio for today's Match Day Live by Steve Howie and Sean Gota. Lovely to see you both, gents. Um, and as you all see as well, we've had a bit of a nice, shiny, a little, a little bit of a sparkle of the studio over the summer. It's all looking very nice and fresh in here, as are our guests, of course. Now, you know that this is the first place to get your team news for every Manchester City game. And we do have that team news for you for today now. So, your starting 11 for today's game is... And Edison starts in goal, and then it is Walker. And the captain today is Ruben Diaz, Ake, Cancelo, De Bruyne, Rodri, Silva, Mares. There he is, the new boy superstar Harlan starts today, and Jack Grealish. So that is your starting 11 for today's Community Shield game. Gents, uh, that's a pretty strong team, Steve. Are you, were you expecting such a strong lineup for today? Well, when I was driving down, I was kind of thinking about what kind of team will Pep play. And I think, um, you know, for, for a manager like Pep, I think sometimes you've just got to go out and put a marker down and just more or less show everybody, look how, how strong you are. I mean, look at the bench and probably look at the bench a little bit later on and how strong that bench is. But that is a very, very strong team. So you can imagine the Liverpool players and, and Jurgen Klopp mightn't have thought, well, I mightn't, I mightn't take it as, uh, as kind of seriously as, as Pep. But he, he would look at that team and think, wow, he's gone for it. Because, I mean, obviously every player on there is a fantastic player. And of course, the main man, which for me has been, I think it's an absolute season changer, game changer. And that's Haaland. Yeah, I mean, Haaland starts today, Sean. I think a lot of people were wondering, would he, wouldn't he? And he does indeed start. How excited are you to see him in the lineup today? I'm, I'm, re I'm really excited. And I'm, I'm not surprised because what we've come to know with Pep Guardiola is that whenever he puts a team out, it's a strong team. It's a quality team. So on the back, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm not, I'm not surprised at all that we've got this really strong team and, and Haaland starting um, excited because we only saw a little flashes of him in pre-season uh, to, see, to see him start. I think his, his um, communication with the team and understanding that's, that's going to, each game, I think that's going to improve. Um, but I, I'm just thinking for him as, as a centre forward, he, he's just, I, I think he's just going to be delighted with, with the season because, again, the amount of chances that City create and a centre forward, it just looks for, for those sort of opportunities. Yeah, so really, really strong team starting today. I love the fact that, I mean, if you compare it to last season when we played in the Community Shield against Leicester and we had um, players that had been coming back because of the Euros, we had injuries. Obviously, we got the news that Amrit Laporte is going to be out until September. Um, but apart from Laporte, we've got a really fit squad, which is which is brilliant. Um, looking at the defence there, Steve, we've got in, in there Ruben Diaz and Nathan Ake playing into centre-backs today. What did you make of um, Nathan Ake over the pre-season? Because I thought he played brilliant. Yeah, I, th I think he's done excellent because obviously there was a period where last season he was kind of not getting in. Yes, there was little nig niggly injuries and stuff like that. I thought when he did get in towards the end of the season, I thought he did ever so well. And for a lot of players, you know, you, you can't maybe have a season which is a stop-start season and, and other little things off the field can happen. But in pre-season, for me, he's really impressed. Obviously, Stones is on the bench. And this could be, I mean, we've mentioned Laporte, but, um, you know, it's a perfect opportunity for me, for, for somebody like Aki, to, to stake his place to start the season. Yeah, how about you, well, Sean? What I, what I liked about him towards, towards the end of the season, I was one of those that probably always had him as a third choice and not really as my first two. But what I really liked about, he, he started to deliver. And I started going away thinking... He didn't put a foot wrong. He's played well. 
he's played solid in there. And, and I started to think, well, hold on here. You, I can't be making these judgments. And, and I started to, to really look at the centre-backs and go, City had just got, you know, quality players all the way through. So I really love what I started to see with him towards the end of the season. He was consistent. He was, you know, on the ball. I was thinking he's making all the right chase, choices, driving forward, sliding passes. And I thought... And, and we always know how important he is in both boxes, you know, offensively and defensively. He, he pops up with the odd girl, and I thought, he's, he's now, he's, he's basically saying, hey, Pep, have a look at me because I'm as good as these others. In the World Cup year as well, mm. so so many of the international players will be all be keeping an eye on that as well. So, um, as always, if you would like to ask our guests any questions, we would love you to. You can use our WhatsApp number that's on screen now. Get them in. You know, I like it when we test them a bit as well. So you can ask them about the team today, ask them about preseason, ask them about anything you would like. Now, today's game is of course being played at the King Power Stadium, and here are some fans that are currently outside and their thoughts ahead of the game. I think it'll be a close game. Um, it could go either way. I'm probably hoping for a City win, though. And um, how do you think the managers will set their teams up to play this game? Is it merely a curtain raiser, or is it their last chance to really kind of nail their teams in that they'll start the league with? It's a bit of both, really. I mean, I'd like to see us start strong, but I'm sure you will be putting on the youngsters. Okay. And there will, there will be a chopping and change from both sides, I imagine. And who are you looking forward to seeing the most? Ireland, the most. I think it'll be electric this season. And yourself, Josh? Um, Calvin Phillips. I think he'll bring a lot of versatile in midfield, or more defensively and more attacking at the same time. What is it about his game that you admire the most then? His passing, to be honest. Yeah. He can defend really well, he can attack, and his passing is just phenomenal sometimes. Yeah. What sort of style do you think City will be playing this season with the new additions to the squad? Hard to tell. He's going to have to adapt and change the style slightly. But hopefully it'll be good. So Liverpool versus Man City, Community Shield here at the King Power. What are your thoughts ahead of the game today? How do you think it's going to play out? Well, with any sort of pre-season friendly, I mean, I still think it'll be competitive. Uh, I'm confident that we will hopefully get a better result than we did last year against the home city of Leicester. <laughs> Indeed. We'll have a, yeah. I mean, it'll be good to see what teams both managers put out as well, because that will determine how we play. But I'm optimistic to hopefully see... Uh, hopefully see some of our new signings come on today. Um, I think it's a competitive game, definitely. Both teams want to win. Um, we've been here before and starting the season off makes a statement for me. So absolutely, it's got to be competitive. We've not had many pre-season games, to be honest. So now is a real challenge for us to get that up to speed. Let's see some of these, you know, the new players. Let's see how they bed in. I watched them against Munich, fabulous last week. I couldn't believe it. What a first half, particularly. So we need to play our strongest team. We've got a week to recover. So let's see how that goes. Let's play our strongest team. Let's see how we go. Let's beat these three or four nil. Let's make a statement. For me, that's what it's all about. And it's a trophy at the end of the day. Okay. We can't help but notice you're both wearing opposing shirts. Uh, could you just explain what's going on, the relationship between the both of you? Yeah, so we're boyfriend, girlfriend. Uh, been together eight years. It's a happy relationship until match day. When it's, it's fine, uh, right? Yeah, fine before match, after match. <laughs> Pen, pen to win. Okay, how do you see the game being played out then? Um, I imagine like a, a foregone conclusion, 5 0. Oh, it's huge, yeah. It's all, it's all yeah. City. Liverpool. Yeah. Not got the team like they had last season. City, um, the, all the changes City's made are more stronger than the ones that have gone. It's, it's, but the ones that have gone did a very good job when they were here. But now I feel that we're moving on, Mom. I love that. So that's some fans outside of the King Power Stadium. I love that the, the Liverpool fan boyfriend just didn't speak. He just stood there. That was brilliant. <laughs> Hopefully uh, it is the City fan, obviously, that will be celebrating in that relationship this evening. Gents, I love what some of the fans were saying there about the importance of this game, because Sean, I totally agree. I want us to win this game convincingly because I do feel like it will send a message. Yes, I do. Um, I think Pep's done that with the, with the team. The thing is, uh, I was sitting there thinking, like, you know, how, how often... Do City teams lose one, two, three times throughout the season? So this team is they always remember winning, and I think he's put the marker down because he wants to win this to go into the start of the of the season having having one preseason game. So it's just a continuation of winning. We look back at the preseason game, and, and you look and you think, well, I used to think you just want to get through the games in terms of fitness. 
But these guys are, are the elite that are the best in the world. It's not just about getting through fitness. They want to also win games. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's exactly be the point today. You've got two teams out there that are want to win. And, and, and Pep is just, he's a serial winner. And I love it because he approaches every game where he wants to win. And he's done exactly the same today with this team. Yeah, you mentioned two teams out there that want to win. And the rivalry between us and Liverpool has been growing, obviously, over the last few years, Stephen. It does feel like whether this was the Community Shield, whether it was a pre-season friendly with nothing attached to it or a game in, in the league or the FA Cup or indeed any competition, we both want to beat each other. Well, of course, I mean, even if it was a game of tiddlywinks and the two teams are lined up against each other, <laughs> you'd want to win. I mean, both sets of fans have travelled there and they've got hopes of seeing their team lifting the trophy. So I don't think you can afford to use this as a warm-up game to the season. I think you've got to use it as this is where we're at, you know, and this is the standard we're going to set. And, you know, we're looking at, um, we've just kind of seen the Liverpool team. Um, you know, both have put out very, very strong teams. So both managers, you know, you know, quite clearly have just put out and thought, well, I'm putting out a, a very, very strong team. And it will be a tough game for both teams. Um, but it's certainly, as I said, it's not one of these where you can just turn up and think, oh, well, well, listen, if Liverpool win, then it, it's, not, it's not really a problem and vice versa. No, no, you want to win, make sure you win and put that marker down for the start of the season. Yeah, we're going to go through the Liverpool team in a minute. Both teams have put out real strong strength teams today, Sean, which I think shows, obviously, the, re the respect that we have for, for Liverpool, they have for us, and, and also for the Community Shield. Yes, exactly. I mean, just looking at the players come over, you can see those that are already in that, that game zone. You know, we're seeing Kevin O'Brien, he's got the headphones on, and he's sort of in that, in that zone. Uh, Holland, he's come off, and he's got this... It's like this, this squint which is like, I'm ready. Uh, and it's, it, it's so early. Again, you can see those who, who, are, uh, who are relaxed because players are, you know, when you come up to coach, some players are at different levels as in ready for the game and some need to, to build up to it. Um, but just looking at one and two, you can see some are just, they're just ready for it. I love watching these pictures. There's obviously Jurgen Klopp and Ilkay Kunduan having a having a bit of a, a bit of a chat there as well. Obviously the German German connection. Kevin De Bruyne with these with these big headphones on, like you say, blocking everything out. And there's Jurgen Klopp greeting um, Erling Haaland. I love when we get to see little, little insights um, like that. In terms of the rest of the team today, really excited to see how Jack Grealish gets on, Steve. I thought he had an excellent pre-season. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there the has been throughout the season um, criticism to, towards him. Um, I seen something not so long ago with, when a few ex-players were talking about him. Uh, I think he's a wonderful player. I, I really, really do. And I think, um, you know, with a manager like Pep Guardiola, I think that's just going to help him so, so much. As the season went on and towards the end of the season, I thought his form was a lot better. I can understand in some ways a little bit of the frustration, but it was a big move. And no disrespect to the Aston Villa players, but, but he has to be at that level, that high level, every single day in training, every single day. And that's, that's the least he has to be at. Um, so looking at him as well in, in the pre-season games, he looks fresh, he looks fit, he looks round to go. And obviously this is another opportunity for him to show how good he is, because let's be honest, he is a very, very good player. Yeah, I can't wait to see how him and um, Harlem might link up um, again like they did, obviously, in, in America. Now, we have the team news for you for Liverpool now. So, the starting 11 for Liverpool for today's Community Shield game. So, in goal, it is Adrian. And then it is Alexander-Arnold, Matip, Van Dijk, Robertson, Fabinho, Captain Henderson, Thiago, Diaz, Salah... And Firmino. Um, and, and for you, in case you were wondering, the new boy, obviously, Darwin Nunes, is on the bench there for Liverpool. So, um, a very strong lineup from Liverpool as well. They do have their third choice goalkeeper playing today because there were the two goalkeepers, Sean, are both injured. Mm. But with the exception of that, this is pretty much their strongest team. Yes, it is. And, it, it, and again, Klopp's thinking the same thing. He's going, he's. He's respected the, the Charity Shields, put out a strong team. He's wanting to put down a mark and say, you know, they're Liverpool and they're a good team and a strong team. And I like that, that both managers are, are approaching it this way. Um, again, I'm looking for this, this uh, with Van Dijk and Haaland, this Lou, because I've heard Haaland say he's one of the, 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 the better defenders he's played against. Um, and when you play against the, the, you know, the best defenders, 
you put yourself in a zone where you, you're wanting to, to, to play well against because you know it's going to be a difficult game. Whenever I came up against a top defender, I'm thinking about it, you know, the week leading up, knowing all the challenges I'm going to have, and I'm sure that that's the same with the two of them, knowing that, you know, he's going to know that Holland is, is a pacey player, a quick player, he's a finisher, he can give him a, a, you know, a yard of space. So it's going to be interesting to see, to see that battle. But Liverpool have gone strong as well, which is good to see. And of course, um, Mohamed Salah starts. What an incredible, incredible player. Um, he's been involved in 11 goals in 14 appearances against us, Steve. He's only scored more goals or been involved in more against West Ham. But I think that's probably a, um, an example of how big the games always are when we play Liverpool, how important the games are and how a world-class player like him steps up in those occasions. Well, yeah, you've just said it there. I mean, I, I did look at that stat before the game. and um, But it just goes to show you do look at your big players in the big games and, and, and quite clearly with them stats, it, it proves it. Um, obviously, Liverpool haven't got Marnia this season, but you've got still got Firmino. As I said, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that uh, Nunes isn't, uh, isn't featuring, whether the manager's just trying to keep him back and maybe he's put him on the second half or what, I'm not too sure. But, yes, I mean, look, you look at that team and for the vast majority of last season with that team, you know, you would have thought, wow, that, that is a very, very strong team. Um, Diaz, for me, I, I was really impressed with him when he came into the fold. A uh, very good player. Thiago's come into his own. I think with his distribution and the way that he plays his game, and so is, um, as I said, uh, Fabino. Um, it is a top team and it will be a difficult game. But as uh, Sean was sort of saying, it'll be interesting the little battles around the pitch. But obviously, the biggest one is for me, Mr. Comfortable, which is Van Dijk. He never looks stressed, he never looks as though he's, he's being pushed. And I think with uh, Erling Haaland, he will be. The difficult thing with Defender is, you know, and if you're marking somebody like Sean, you'd feel as though for 89 minutes, even 90 minutes, you're quite comfortable, not a problem. Kind of, listen, we're just going to get the points here and walk away. You switch off for that millisecond second and people like Gord who was, who was a goal scorer and he, he scored goals even if sometimes they came off his backside they still went in. <laughs> they all but, catch on. They do. Okay. Uh, but Erlen Haaland he's that type of player as well. You switch off for that millisecond it's a goal Man City win 1-0 and all of a sudden it's like he got the better of Van Dijk when really Van Dijk could have had the better of him for the most games but yeah. these are top strikers and top players. I was excited about this game before the teams, but now we've seen both the teams. I'll be, I'm even more excited, Sean. Um, Steve mentioned, obviously, they, they, they lost Mane in the summer. Yeah. He obviously went to Bayern Munich. How much of a loss is that for Liverpool? Well, Mane, I thought, was, was a brilliant team player because he would, he would be one that, that scored goals. Didn't score as much as Salah, but he'd get in positions uh, and he'll, he'll be able to create goals for other players. And I think that was one of his real assets. Not only did he score goals, but he would threaten him behind, but he was one to be able to assist others. Uh, whereas Salah's one of those that if you, if you, if you take away the shot from Salah, you, you take away so much from him because he's just thinking, I'm in the box, can I shoot, can I shoot? And, and, and to be fair, he, he, he should do more assists. But with a racket like his, I see why he shoots as often as he does. Now, Mane wasn't in the Bayern Munich team that we played um, over in America. But just mentioning it gives us an excuse to have a look at Haaland's goal again, as if we need one. Um, so, of course, here, here is Haaland's goal, 12 minutes into his first time in a Manchester City shirt playing. Um, of course, the assist coming from Jack Grealish there. So thrilled when that went in, Steve, in 12 minutes into his first game. Yeah, actually, I thought it was 11, uh, 11 minutes. Uh, but, I mean, how many times do I was seen City get in those areas, those wide areas, when it comes to Grealish here, or, or whether it's been Mares, and they've been fizzed across the box, and there hasn't been anybody there. And you can see he's on his, he's on his toes, he's desperate to get there. He knows there's somebody behind him, he knows he's his teammate behind him, but he wants that goal. And that just goes to show the determination that he's got to get a goal every single opportunity that he can. Yeah, after my initial reaction of, yes, he scored, then I was like, Sean, how many times last season did we have chances like that and we didn't have... I mean, with the amount of goals we scored, yeah. but we still had so many chances where we didn't score in opportunities like that. Yeah, and, and a centre-forward, is th that's exactly what they're thinking. Once that ball slid down his side, a centre-forward's thinking, I need to be first onto that. And that ball, Grealish does well. Before he receives it, Grealish has a look over his shoulder. He realises that he could turn. Uh, and then he's just thinking, put that across. And what I like is he makes up a half a yard. He makes up a, bit, a half a yard on this. But, well, De Bruyne is the pass before he pass. And here he puts it across. He makes up that you know, that half a yard to get a foot on that. Um, and that's, that's a typical centre-forward. And I think 
you know, that one is actually a, a close cross. I think we'll see quite him score probably 10 a season with a ball that may be passed on his side uh, where it's coming a flashed across the box and you'll see him getting on the end of it. Whether it's a side tap in like that or a hatter or some sort, I think we'll see him get at least uh, 10 goals like that a season. I think with somebody like him, I think Premier League defenders will actually be taken aback because they're not used to somebody that's big, strong, powerful and quick. They're used to technical players, yeah, but he's got technical ability, there's absolutely no doubt about it. But he looks hungry. It looks as though any long ball, he wants to beat that defender to it. And as I said, defenders will be like, wow, not, not used to this, because he's, he's aggressive. And he wants to win every ball and he wants to score goals. So, I mean, I'm so looking forward to him next season. Well, this season. I Me can't too. wait to see him. I really can't wait to see him. I feel like we're just blessed that we're going to get to watch him every, every game that, that, that he plays in. I'm so excited. And that's the way I always feel about Kevin De Bruyne as well, because we're always so blessed to watch Kevin De Bruyne. Obviously, he was involved in that goal there as well. And in the game against Club America, Sean, he scored two goals. He looked like a man that was absolutely on, possessed in this game. Like, he was making a mark. 45 minutes. Yeah. That was all it took. In the first pre-season friendly, Kevin De Bruyne is back. Yeah, well, you see her, it shows a bit of aggression, a determination, but then also the skill, the skill element that he has. And he, he I'm looking, and again, I'm thinking... City were being pushed by this team. City were really being pushed. Uh, but when you've got players like Kevin De Bruyne in there, Bernardo Silva, these, these you know, quality players, these guys don't like losing. And he's just, he just took the game and went, no, I'm not accepting this. We're world class. Again, a bit of aggression, but then there's the quality. Um, he just passes balls, side foot balls. I mean... This looks very easy and very simple, but that's because of the quality of him. And I can tell you, it's not as easy as he makes it look weekly. He makes it look so easy. It makes me feel like I could do it, but obviously, obviously I couldn't. Um, Pep said in, in the week as well that um, Kev Kevin De Bruyne is the best midfielder in the world. Yeah, yeah well, you, you can't disagree with it, I don't think. I mean, you think about last year, he was injured, really, when he came back from, um, from the Euros. Was it the Euros? Yes. Um, so, of course, we had to wait for him to get back, but again, you look at him with this goal, he just makes that run behind the defender. He's brilliant at finding that little pocket of space just to sort of make room for himself so he can either dictate the player with his passing or, like the first goal, where he just opens himself up and passes it in. It's a, it is a pass, but there's some pace on that ball when it, when it hits the net. It whizzes past the goalkeeper. And obviously with that one, as I said, he's just the wrong side of the, the defender. It's a great ball into him, but he fires it in the bottom corner and gives the, the goalkeeper no chance. But, I mean, he, again, sometimes, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky enough to come, come to the Etihad and, and actually watch him uh, with, with, the, with the job that I do. And I actually feel just blessed to be able to watch some of these players because these, these are just outstanding, outstanding players. Yeah, I mean, I'll just piggyback on that. What I like what he does in terms of finding his space, the pocket of space, he ends up standing in places where defenders think, I'm happy with you being right there. Yeah. And then the next minute, in that split second, mm -hmm. he runs off their shoulder and he's in. And, uh, uh, you know, when we just saw one of those clips there, you could see his, his quality. He makes you think, oh, I've got you. You're, you're right where I want you as a defender. And then the minute they take their eye off of him and they're like, right, I'm on the ball, he's making a dart and run uh, and there's a quality pass into him and, and he does what he does. He either finishes it or he's putting across your face in the box. He's absolutely brilliant. I remember just kind of laughing at the halftime, like 45 minutes into pre-season and he's already doing that. Like, yeah. what, what, what is he going to do when he's had a couple of games? Um, do you agree with Pep, Sean? I'm sure you do. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne, best midfielder in yes, the world? Yes, yes. Um, Again, he, he's wide, he delivers a quality ball. When he's central, the way to pass through the middle, again, it's like where players don't have to break their stride. They just have a touch and they finish it. Sometimes they could just go and finish it. Um, his, his ability to find the loop pocket spaces, he, he is world class. He really is. So, um, Erling Haaland currently warming up at the King Power Stadium. Um, I think many of us, Steve, are excited to see how he links up with Kevin De Bruyne. Also, of course, Jack Grealish and our other midfielders, but specifically the relationship between him and Kevin De Bruyne, I think, is going to be really interesting to watch this season. Yeah, it is, but I mean, you, you look at Kevin De Bruyne, at Bernardo Silva, Mares, when he whips the ball in, Grealish, Foden. You know, the, there's so much kind of ammunition that they're going to be given, given uh, uh, Haaland. I mean, he must be looking at, um, and I think he was, you know, when the interviews that he's done, he's been watching Man City last season. 
And he must have been relishing the fact, knowing that he was coming to Manchester City, thinking, oh my Lord, all these balls that's coming into these areas, he's just going to get so many goals. You look at the team itself, the, the look as though the bond and off the pitch as well, not just on and not like kind of 11, 11 separate individuals just coming together on, on, a, on, a, on a match day. The look as though they really all get on collectively off the pitch as well, which helps massively. But as I said, he would have had a conversation with his dad, Alfie, who both of us played with. And um, he must have just sort of said, Dad, you know, this, this has to be the place that I go to. Uh, and of course, you know, we're all going to watch him today. And, I, and like I said, honestly, I'm like a kid, really, who just can't wait. I'm like waiting for Christmas morning. For, I'm, I'm just waiting for kickoff to watch him live properly in a fantastic Manchester City team. I love the fact that you both played with his dad as well. I just, I, I love that. And just the connection that he has with the club just, just makes everything yeah. more special, Sean. It does. And I, I don't know, what was he worry, you know, before he signed? Because I was just thinking... I always just put it in, in a position thinking if I'm if I'm Harlan, I'm the you know best best striker in the world and you've got the best manager that's won everything. He also has your team play in a way that all attacking players would be like, Yep, I'm having that. I want to play for him. It it was a no brainer. So for me, I just felt it was always gonna be and then his his dad's connection, um, you know, he was a big player that came to the club. Um and he, you know, he, he was young, but he would have seen and, and got connected with City. So we're just pleased it, it's all over. But speak, going back to sort of the crosses, I'm thinking Mahrez, the, the, the quality of crosses Mahrez puts in. I mean, all our players put in quality balls, but Mahrez puts in balls where you just got to get the slightest little nick and it's a go. And he's 6'3". He's um, he, the amount of touches he will... I, 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 could, I could see him getting seven goals, seven, eight goals for Mahrez crosses. Like... Uh, I've got him on 18 already. <laughs> I've got him on 18 in about the half a From season. From two players. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, he, will, he will score goals because he's a goal scorer and we create different types of uh, opportunities. I can't wait now to see who how many assists he gets from the different players. And I bet they're all so excited, Sean, to have that front man now. Obviously, you'll know as a striker, how important is it to have that relationship with the people that are feeding you, Sean? It is, it's so important because in, in, in my early years, it was someone like Kevin Hollock, because he had, he had the quality. And the thing is, we have quality all around this team for Holland. So the balls on the left-hand side is quality. If it's on the right-hand side, it's quality. If it's central, it's quality. And, and, and that's the great thing. He knows that if a team are pressing, the ball could be with, with one of our centre-backs and he's just dropping his shoulder and the ball's in behind and he's got a one-on-one. -on -one. So there's different ways in which he, he can be fed. But, you know, when I look at City, if De Bruyne is wide crossing balls or going to that byline, putting it across, he will be first on it. If Moraes is cutting back on his left foot, I could see him getting, getting those slight touches that just, you know, deflects it towards goal. And the same thing on, on, on the other side with Grealish coming in. Uh, so I, I, I could see him scoring lo loads of goals. I, I, this one I feel so certain about. I oh. really do. I was so excited before the game. Then I was excited when I saw the teams. And now speaking to you both, I, th I feel like I'm going to pop. I cannot wait for this game today. Cannot wait for the, for the new season. Uh, thank you for sending in your WhatsApp questions for our guests. Do keep them coming in. And as always, I'll try and get through as many as I can. So let's have a start now. So Mahir Desai, thank you very much. First question today um, has asked, thoughts on our depth at our depth? At fullback, with Zinni gone, we only have two senior fullbacks, and both are right backs. Of course, Shao Cancelo can play everywhere. Um, what's your thoughts on our fullback, Steve? Um, I think the fullbacks that they have, though, are, are, are quality. Um, I think you've got to be unfortunate if, to, to get injuries to, to players in that position. Obviously, the speculation for the lad at, uh, at Brighton. Um, I know that people have been impressed with his performances this season, but there's still a long way to go with the transfer deadline. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Pep went in and kind of got somebody for that position. Would you feel better if, if we did strengthen in bringing in someone else? Of course, Josh wilson Esbrand had a brilliant two yeah. pre-season games. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's an ideal thing for the manager. You know, he, he could look at that and look at the kids coming through and, and, and thinking, well, you know, do I need to be spending 30, 40, probably 50 million on, on players when, when I've got, you know, players here that I feel as though, you know, I might be able to give them an opportunity and these players might be able to step up to the mark. So... I could understand you might want more strength and depth, but at the same time, 
um, I wouldn't be that worried because of the quality of the player that's in that position at the moment. We have a question about Josh actually for you, Sean. It's um, JBK, thank you for your question, has asked, do you think that he, ca Josh wilson Esbrand can make it as a left-back for City? Yes, that's an easy, that's a easy um, answer to that question. He has pace. What I've seen already from him, he's a player that wants to drive forward and affect the game offensively. And when you're, when you're quick as a defender, very seldom are you ask or people ask questions of you to defend. Kyle Walker, with his pace, you don't often see Kyle Walker being exposed because if I'm, any of your attackers go into Kyle Walker, they're thinking, uh, I don't think so. I perhaps wouldn't go inside because he's got that pace. Uh, and Josh is the same. He's got, he's got pace about him. Um, and I think the more games, you start to see his personality. So I feel quite confident with what we have. Um, I think I read that the, the lad from Brighton may have uh, put in a transfer request. Yeah. So, it, listen, I, I know that what we have is quality. So if, he, if that lad comes, brilliant. And if he doesn't, we've still got good quality. Yeah, Mark Cucurella, obviously, it's all just rumours we have. Yeah. No idea mm. at this point. But Josh, I thought, yeah, had a brilliant pre-season. Particularly loved his cowboy video with Scott Carson. If you haven't seen it, you need to get on uh, to the app and you need to watch that incredible video of Josh Wilson, S. Brown and Scott Carson dressing up as cowboys. Now, one last question. Um, I'll try and get through a little bit more later on today. But Carlos says, a shout out to you all today. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, City, for coming to the USA as well. It was a joy to see you lads in Green Bay. And my question to the guys are, how are you feeling about what you've seen so far in pre-season. For, well, go on. Do you for, want to go? for me, for me, it's. I'm, I'm not surprised because again, you know, Pep approaches games. He wants to win. We're seeing seeing De Bruyne just take that game where the boys are being being stretched and challenged, and then just switch it on his head. Scored two great goals and go. No, we walk away from this game having won. And they just go into pre-season games and and, and and win, which is, for me, it's remarkable that, not fully. 100%, don't get me wrong, I think there's somewhere around between 90 and, and 100. Um, but to just still go preseason games and just win, it's, yeah. Yeah, I think the, the team was, was already a special team. But, I, but, you know, you're always thinking we still have to make it stronger. We still have to, because you have to progress. Because if you don't progress, you stand still and other, other teams will, will surpass you. Um, and the manager's gone out. He, he has brought strength into the, into the club, into the squad. But as I said, and I must have said it about five or six times now, for me, the game changer is Haaland because, you know, the team really hasn't had an out now goal scorer. But having said that, scored some spectacular goals as well. Uh, and obviously that was Aguero. I did like Gabriel Jesus. I really did like him. Um, he, he's flo he looks as though he's flourishing at Arsenal at this moment. But for me, the, the icing on the cake is, is uh, Erling Haaland. So I just can't wait to watch him. Yes, yeah, so oh, what a what a cake, Sean. We'd have a bit of that, wouldn't we? Love that. Love that. <laughs> So, uh, thank you again for sending your WhatsApp questions. I will try and get through a few more. Uh, just a little reminder now as well to get your commentary on today's game. You need to download the City app, as I'm sure you all have already. But if not, this is your reminder. And also on the app, you can get City Plus if you're not a subscriber. What are you doing? There's so many amazing things on there, including you can get a full replay of today's game from midnight on City Plus and recast. You can also get the very first episode of our new documentary champions again together. The strategy is the plan, we follow them from me. It's always going to be difficult, you know, he, he was Mr. Aston Villa. His little fill-in. I'm thankful to everyone who helped me in that period. We cannot do the same again! What? That's an allegation I don't agree with. It's a huge week for City. They've got Chelsea away, then they've got PSG away, and then they finish the week at Anfield, which is probably just about the hardest week in world football. I hear you. The most is when you don't want the ball. Jesus turning and scoring! <laughs> Yeah.
together champions again you can get the first episode now on city plus what an incredible incredible documentary and it shows exactly as steve was mentioning the incredible bond that the team have you have to you have to watch it it's a really really special documentary now two other players that played alongside erling's dad i'm sure he doesn't mind being called that these days is sean wright phillips and paul dickoff and they are both pitch side now at the king power stadium with our georgia Yes, guys, so I'm here with City legends Paul Dickoff and Sean Wright Phillips. Guys, first of all, we just had the lineup. We've got the team warming up in the background there. What do you make of that starting 11 for City? Strong. Um, I mean, Sean saying we've got the team's very attacking as well. Um, absolutely buzzing early in starting. Um, you know, there was a little um, question yesterday whether he was going to start or not. Um, but Marez, Grealish, Haaland, with Bernardo, Kevin De Bruyne. Wow, can't wait to begin. Um, I'm really excited for it as well, especially the matchup between Grealish and Trent. I think Grealish should have the beating of them today, and if we play the way we normally do and create the chances we do, I'm sure Haaland will put them in the back of the net. Lovely, and is it Haaland who you're most looking forward to, or is anyone else? Maybe some of our new signings that you're looking forward to. You might get a chance to come off the bench as well. Yeah, good Calvin Phillips, obviously, um, but I'm really looking forward to uh, Julian Alvarez as well. You know, you've seen, we've all seen a lot of clips of him, we've seen him little bits and pieces in pre-season, looks razor sharp. I uh, don't want to put too much pressure on him, but the goals you see him scoring, how he handled himself, he's got a little bit of Sergio Aguero about him. Um, that's a lot of pressure to put on him, but um, as a whole, just looking forward to the season starting again. Um, I know it's a community shield, but we want to beat Liverpool and put a marker down for the rest of the season. Um, it'll, be, it'll definitely be great to put the, get the first bit of silverware on the table and that psychological mindset going into the season, obviously, with the first piece is always a start to start off on the right foot. And I think if, if we got play the way we always play and be entertaining, I think that would be the icing on the cake. Definitely agree. And Liverpool, of course, like you mentioned, they're a big threat. Where, where do you think that they will sort of threaten us the most in this game today? What I often see these two teams playing is that, and it's credit to both managers, is they don't change. You know, we know Liverpool, they, they want to press the middle of the park, they want to press up front, but we know Man City, if we keep the ball and get them running around a bit, we're going to get the better of them. Obviously, you've got Salah, um, I'm a big fan of Diaz as well since he's come in. Um, but it's just two fantastic teams, you know, but always, 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 I think Manchester City are going to win. Now, look, um, considering they've only had two games pre season, the lads look super fit at this stage, you know, and get another 90 minutes under their belt, get into the start of the season next week, but people say this isn't important as. Yeah, I'm really, I'm honestly really looking forward to the game, to be honest. Uh, a bit much, pretty much what Paul said. For me, it'd just be nice to see the lads all back together, playing football, and I just can't wait for the, this game to be over and see to win it and for the Premier League season to start. Indeed, I agree with you as well. And one final thing then before we go, we've got to get it from you. Score predictions? I'm going 2-1 um, City. I'm going to go 3-1. I'll take either of them. I'll take either. Well, thank you very much, guys. Um, back to you in the studio. <laughs> so two predictions of wins there from Sean Wright Phillips and Paul Dickoff, who are pitch side at the King Power with our lovely Georgia there. Um, I'm having those predictions, by mm. the way, gents. Uh, mm. Two one and three one. Either of those will do with me. Now a new season brings a new game to Match Day Live, and you know that I love our games. Now we don't quite have a jazzy title for this one yet. Um, we're calling it Guess the Missing Names from Shirt Numbers. We really we really do need a jazzier name for our new game. If you think you can help, do let us know. So guess the number nine. So gents, you're the first people to play our new game. Are you very excited? Um, yeah, because Steve's, <laughs> Steve's, Steve's well, I'm uh, a good partner. Straight away, I'm yeah. puzzled. <laughs> Steve's definitely <laughs> thinking, what have I got myself into here? <laughs> you love our games, Sean. You all love our games as well. We know yes. you do. So here's the new game. So obviously, um, in honour of today, uh, Erling Haaland starts today in the Community Shield. He's going to be wearing shirt number nine. Mm -hmm. So we have got, we're looking at our previous five number nine wearers. We've given you, or six even, sorry. We've given you three of them. We've given, and this is also in chronological order, and all you need to do is guess who are the missing number nines. Woo! We need some, we need some like, tentative uh, music here. Yeah, ooh. Right, so, you can see there, so most recent number nine, Gabriel Jesus, and then someone, 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 and then it was Valerie Bodjanoff, and then it was um, Emilia Mpenza. So, the missing ones, gents, feel free to confer. This is where I'm really relying on my team, my partner. <laughs> 
Me, well, me you're a team, you're a team. My glasses are being taken off, so I can't even see who's there and who's not. <laughs> I'm squinting. I am rubbish at... City number nines. City number nines. City nines. number nines. Uh, Alvarez. All right, forwards, forwards. Um, Alvarez, was there right, Alvarez? No. See how you get on, they don't, I'll give you some nine, clues. Don't, we're nines nowadays, uh, apart from Holland. OK, so uh, I'll give you one. Nine. So I'll give you a little clue for one of them. Um, this person was very well known for a particular iconic celebration that he did. Oh. Oh, what's his name? Dear me. Um, <laughs> you, is that why I was me, no, T-shirt? No, 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 not Mario, no. Play for Arsenal. Um, yes. Striker. The, the, yes. He's done the long run down the line. Touch yes. oh, I'm, I'm Bong Lahore. No, I'm no. Bong Lahore. <laughs> um, what do you call him? It begins with an ear. Hey, can I, can I call a friend? <laughs> <laughs> it begins with an ear. It does kind of sound like a bong law, kind of, um, if you it's, wait a bit. Why was, it begins with an he ear. He's done the long run down the touch line. He, when he scored against Arsenal. Yeah. So. I'm, what's his name? <laughs> I don't I really want to help so him. It, it begins watching. with an ear, doesn't it? It does begin with an ear. Oh. It does, doesn't it? Um, if you know it at home, feel free to WhatsApp. It'll probably come through quicker. We're just, we're just giving them a chance to get their answers in. Um, if I give <laughs> you yeah. give you his first Thank name, Emmanuel. That don't help me. I always, <laughs> it's the ear. I know who he is, but I can't. I know, I can see. Him. I can picture him. OK, we're going to have to I'm going to give it to you because it's getting painful. Emmanuel Adibayo. Adibayo. How close are they with Ham I couldn't have been any closer. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, with no help whatsoever. Hey, how close was no. I? He ran down the touchline. <laughs> Dear, I even got it pretty much right with that bungle hole. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> the game anybody is a success. The game is a success. Apologize. I apologize. Okay, so you're missing two. So else. I'll let you have a little think. We'll also ask everybody at home to help them. They need some help. Yeah, they some really help, need some, some help. help. Some help. Send in your WhatsApp guesses as well if you know who the missing number nines <laughs> are. We'll, um, we'll, have you, we'll let you have a little think yeah, yeah, for a minute. Yeah. Have a little think now while I let, let everybody know what the, the team is uh, for today. So a little recap of City starting 11 for today's Community Shield game against Liverpool. And you are about 19 minutes now away from kickoff. So starting 11, it is Edison. And then it is Walker. Diaz, who is captain today. Ake. And then it's Cancelo. De Bruyne, Rodri and Silva. And then it is Mares, Haaland and Grealish. That is your starting 11. Now, on the bench, you do get Ortega, Phillips and Julian Alvarez. Our other three new signings for the summer are all on the bench today as well. Uh, Big Steve is not in today's starting 11, which may be a bit of a disappointment to, to a few people. But I tell you what, seeing as he's popped up and graced us with his presence, <laughs> let's, have, uh, let's hear what Big Steve had to say earlier in the week. <laughs> I, I like the one at Villa Park. That game was different. It was at Villa Park. Tevez scored. I remember that one as I really enjoyed it. I enjoy the community shields. It gets football back early for me. It's the curtain raiser. It's good to see how the new signings integrate into the team, see the fitness levels, see where the team's at. It's always good to get a trophy on board as well and start the season the right way. So, yeah, it's quite important. Uh, I look forward to it. In Liverpool at the minute, and they're neck and neck rivals with us. The levels Manchester City and Liverpool are taking the Premier League to is unbelievable. So, to, to play them, after the games at the Etihad and Anfield last season, which were full of drama, you know it's going to be spicy. Can't wait for it. The signing I'm most looking forward to is obviously Erling Braut Haaland. I mean, to sign that kind of player at Manchester City is a dream for us. A lad that's got a connection with the club, you know, all the features are coming out now when he was a kid in the City kits and stuff. We've seen him at the unveiling. He's obviously passionate for the club and for the price and everything. It's just, he's just made for us. I can't, I can't really wait for it, to be honest. He's coming in with a, with a big bulk of pressure on him, you know, replacing Mane. He's no mean feat. He's a good player, but, you know, big price tag, pressure. It's just to see if he can adapt to the Premier League. I think he'll do all right. I'm really, really confident. I mean, looking at Pep Guardiola, the additions he's made, he can't not be confident. I'm expecting us to defend our title. I'm expecting us to fight for all trophies on all fronts. Hopefully, this season we can get that Champions League. 
So that was Big Steve's thoughts earlier in the week about the Community Shield. Um, oh, yeah, and just what an incredible rivalry we have had building with Liverpool over the last few years. And as I mentioned before, Sean, it makes me even more want to win this, this game. Yes. The rivalry between us and Liverpool, though, I do think that in a way that it has helped both teams and it has pushed both teams to be even better. It has. I mean, the, 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 the racket that both teams have gone on has been, it's been unbelievable because, I mean, when we were playing, a manager coming in and say, listen, we need to go on a good run and say, we need to go on a good five or six games. These, <laughs> these two managers have taken, you know, they've gone to ridiculous levels. And, you know, they go 18, 20 games and you just think, win, 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 win. And it's an absolute phenomenal standard that these two teams have set. And, and it's, it's like the old Messi and Ronaldo. They both need each other. And I think that's, that's been the case. It's City, City and Liverpool. It's like City are winning, Liverpool are winning. And, and both are looking and saying, well, over to you, over to you. Uh, and and I, I think this is why there's a huge respect for the managers uh, and even the players, because different ways in how we play, but we still get there towards the end in terms of who's going to be the best. And you, you have to respect you have to respect both teams. The games are always incredibly tight when we play Liverpool. Obviously, we played them last in, in, in the Community Shield in 2019, where we won the game on penalties. Um, of course, last season, the two league games were draws. The FA Cup game, Liverpool won, but it was very, very much a game of, of two halves. Obviously, them the, being the better in the first and us being the better in the second. So the games are always extremely tight. We're seeing the, the penalties now. Now from there's Gabriel Jesus stepping up in that beautiful classic mm. classic kit but yeah winning the game on on penalties and um, the games we play against them well, they just they're always tight fine fine margins Steve well yeah I mean that's what it is when you when you've got two uh, top top players I mean both managers have come out publicly and said each manager has pushed each other on uh, I mean you look at Liverpool a couple of seasons ago the the, the total of points that they got and they still didn't win uh, the league, you know, and that just goes to show how relentless both teams had to be. Um, and, it, and it's, as I said, it is one of them where, as a player, you might be looking at, uh, at how Liverpool do, and it's like, wow, they've won again, so we have to win again. And then, oh, Man City's won again, so we have to win again. And they have both pushed them on so, so much. And I think not only as both managers brought in quality, but that quality has actually got better individually, not only because of the manager, but actually because of Liverpool or because of Manchester City, because your game's got to, got to be, be further up. And if it's not, you'll get found out or you'll drop points, which both of these teams really haven't done. I mean, uh, Sean had mentioned it before. You know, the, the games that these two teams lose throughout the season is one, two, possibly. Yeah. I mean, that is that is just ridiculous goal. You know, it's just constant every single day. And not only the games, it's the training, the intensity of the training, how it must be, and how, how brilliant the managers and their staffs must be as well to be with the players all this time trying to get them to the top of the game every single time they train and play. Yeah, you mentioned the managers there, of course. We all think that we would be great managers, don't we? Well, you have an incredible opportunity to prove that you are the best Manchester City manager, bar Pep, out there by taking part in our FPL League. Yes, it is that time again. FPL is back. Now, um, you'll know by now that I love FPL. Um, a couple of our, our guests regularly enjoy playing FPL and I like to always check if I'm doing better than them or not. Well, this season, we will know because we are having our own league. So if you play FPL, join our league. The code is on your screen now. We are also going to semi-force a lot of our guests to play. Gents, have we forced you into a team yet? I could be forced into a team. Oh, we're going to force Steve to make a team today and join up, Sean? Of course. Oh, yes. Who do you think is going to be better? Hmm... Oh, no. Probably Steve. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> going to say like, about that. Um, when alone. they played the guess the number nine game, <laughs> I think I'm going to be OK. <laughs> but we are going to be having uh, our guests, um, our other presenters as well. I hear that FG is already saying that he's going to win the whole league. So let's not be having that. Get joining our fantasy league as well. I will be in it. I just haven't quite done my team yet. I'm just taking my time. You know, I want to just assess pre-season. I want to, you know, make sure I know have all the details. And you do have till Friday to get your team in in as well. It is 6pm on Friday, British time. That is the deadline to get in your FPL team. And then once you've done that, join our league. I cannot wait to follow this league throughout the season, although I'm suddenly feeling an immense amount of pressure.
to do well. So yes, join our FPL team. So we are around about 11 minutes away now from kickoff in today's Community Shield game. A little reminder as well, make sure you downloaded the app so that you can get exclusive commentary on there with the wonderful Alistair Mann and Michael Brown. And then on the app as well, you can get City Plus so that you can see um, the full game tonight at midnight replayed on City Plus and also get all of the other incredible documentaries that are available on there as well. So gents, 10 minutes away from the Community Shield today. Today. We've definitely um, got the three of us have managed to get each other more excited than we already were talking about it. Sean, give us your kind of final thoughts. What's your predictions ahead of the game? Well, I always find that when we play Liverpool, there's always an element where we, we sort of dominate, dominate games and for some reason we don't take the game totally out of, out of the hands. But today I just feel that we will. And I think Paul Dickhoff said 3-1. And I'm thinking between 3-1 and 4-1. Uh, I really do think that we have the finished article in terms of Haaland in this, in this team as well. So I'm feeling pretty good about, about City. Ooh, Steve, how are you feeling? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to it. I think, you know, you don't want... Where we are, you know, when you look forward to these big games and they end up being kind of dull affairs, I don't think this is going to be one of them. Um, I agree with Sean and I agree with Dickie as well. I think this could be a, a 3 4 uh, 1 kind of game, and I do fancy Haaland to get possibly two goals as well. So that's my thoughts. I could be completely wrong. I normally I, am. I'll tell you what, you've, you've gone and outdone me. I've gone with the 4 1, gave myself two choices, right? Here in the game, and I went, well, Haaland will get two goals as well. <laughs> Wait, he doesn't, he doesn't know yet, does he? he doesn't know yet, Sean. Yeah, go big go home. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, predicted victories there from Sean and from Steve and also from Sean Wright Phillips and Paul Diggoff, who were pitch side a little bit earlier. Now we're going to hear from Michael Brown, who is part of our commentary team for today's game. He'll be alongside Alistair Mann. He is at the King Power and here's his thoughts about today's game. He's speaking to our Georgia. Yes, thank you, Nestle. And I'm here with former City star Michael Brown. Michael, what do you make of that lineup? Well, it's an extremely li strong lineup as expected. That midfield area, I was wondering, would Calvin Phillips get into that? That midfield three, Ilkay Gundogan as well, who's not played, but I think that's a really strong one against this opposition. So, you know, all around the pitch, Nathan Ake getting another opportunity as well at the two full back positions as expected. And then at the top of the pitch, that will be the talking point, won't it? Erling Haaland, I'm sure it will be. And rightly so, he deserves this chance. But this is where he's going to start to be tested, see what he can bring to Manchester City. He's so confident, though, isn't he? And on that left-hand side, Jack Grealish, Riyad Mahrez as well on the right-hand side. And I think it's a really strong lineup. I think it's going to be a great game. We're all looking forward to it. And against a really good opposition as well. Exactly. And you spoke briefly then about some of our new signings. We got a chance to see a little glimpse of them during pre-season. What did you make of that? Well, obviously, at the, the top of the pitch, Erling Haaland didn't play that first one. We were all waiting in, in commentary when he's going to be on there. Then the team sheet came in. 12 minutes, we've seen him score that goal. Then there was a bit of a break. So it was a good start for him. Calvin Phillips, who I know very, very well. Great lad, great talent, playing many, many positions as well. Not just that holding midfield player that everybody's expecting. He can play further up in an eight position, dropping the centre back in a two or a three. So hopefully he'll get more opportunities. And Alvarez, he's the one as well who's going to give that little bit of difference at the top of the pitch. Really dynamic, good at getting the ball back. I want to see him get opportunities, not just getting the ball back and what that work rate is. We want to see his finishing, see how he can get those opportunities and start getting some goals for City. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be great to see that happen. And finally, just before you go, score prediction for today. What do you reckon it's going to be? Well, I'm not sure. You know, everything's the penalties these days, isn't it, with cup finals, etc. I'm going to have to go 2-1 Manchester City. So we take that, won't we? I'll take that indeed, I'll take that. Perfect, thank you very much. So we'll hand over back to you in the studio, but don't forget, we've got Michael Brown here and Alice Man on our co-commentary, so make sure you download our Man City app to listen to that during the game. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Georgia, there, who is with Michael Brown, who was just, you know, casually name dropping his good friend, Calvin Phillips. I like that. I see you, Brownie. I see you. He's gone for 2 1. So we've had 2 1s, 3 1s, 4 1 predictions today. I'll take, I'll take any of them right now, gents. Uh, Michael did mention Calvin Phillips there as well. We've not had a chance to talk about him quite yet today, Sean. We will, of course, over the season talk about him in depth as well. But uh, how happy are you with him as a signing? Oh, I think it's a brilliant signing. The thing is, Pep's able to get j just so much more from players because of because of the tactics, the knowledge. Uh, we saw the sort of player he was for Leeds when he when he was out of Leeds' team and how 
how much they decline. And I think the quality he brings is that that energy, obviously his, his quality in terms of what Pep will add to it, uh, I think it's a brilliant signing for us. Sean's friend um, Gary Neville in the week said he was the best ever, in, or he's the best current English midfielder. Mm -hmm. um, as a, a decent review that for him. Absolutely. I mean, I think he's very, very good at what, what he actually does. Um, he's very good at breaking up play, but when he breaks up play, he's very good at the distribution of the ball as well and, and putting it to the, the, the right player, not just passing it to somebody for passing's sake. He, yes, he might have two or three options, but he, he tends to pass it to the best option. I do like him. I mean, I was so impressed with him when he, when he, when he finally really got in the first team with, uh, with England. Um, I thought him and uh, Declan Rice were absolutely superb together. He carried that on. Unfortunately, got a got an injury uh, last season, but I think he's going to be a star here as well at City. Well, thank you, gents. Thank you very much. It's been been a pleasure. Keep thinking about that game. We'll come back to it. We won't, we've not forgotten. We're going to come back to you at half time to see how you're getting on thinking about those names. And thank you very much for joining us on Match Day Live today. The players are in the tunnel. They'll be heading out soon for today's Community Shield as City take on Liverpool. Get your commentary on the City app with Alistair Mann and Michael Brown. And we will all be back at half time, hopefully talking about some City goals. And so it all begins again. Hardly see.